Okay, we're going to do some solving of complicated equations. These ones come from problems where you know the answer, but you're missing a part. Let's try it. The basic idea is like this. What if you were given the volume of a cylinder and asked for the height? That's kind of backwards, right? Usually you're given the height and the radius, and I ask what's the volume, and you just apply the formula. So this is a situation where you know the volume, but one of the variables is missing. Another example is this one. What if you were given the circumference of a circle? Again, that's the answer usually. And ask for the radius. So we don't know the radius, and we would solve for it. Okay, I'm gonna give you a two-part strategy for these kinds of problems. The first thing I need you to do is to write an equation made of the formula on one side and the answer that was given in the problem on the other side. So you're going to write that equation, formula equals answer, and then to find that missing piece, you're going to isolate the variable that stands for the missing part. Whatever variable that is, you need to get it by itself. Let's try it. Here's an example. Find the radius for each circle. So we're going to solve for r. In case a, we know the circumference. Okay, remember my strategy. Step one is to write an equation with the formula on this side and the answer on the other side. So let's do that. Circumference formula is pi times diameter or 2 times pi times r. In this case, I'm going to use r because that's what's missing. If the diameter was missing, I would use d times pi. Okay? And then set that equal to the answer. So that's equal to 18 pi. And that's what I mean. This is the answer. You know the circumference, and that's the answer. This one is the formula side. So now that I have the formula is equal to the answer, check and make sure that radius is the only variable, and it is. I see r right there, okay? This is the variable we want to isolate. We're going to solve for it by getting it by itself. So keep this in mind. What I have over here is 2 times pi times r. So we're going to use division to get rid of those because it's the opposite operation. What you can do is get rid of one thing at a time. So dividing by 2 is going to factor out that 2, but you have to do it to the other side, right? So these reduce, and I'm left with pi times the radius is equal to, now 18 and 2 reduce also equals 9 pi. So you can already see that r is going to be 9. The math that proves why that's true is this, divide both sides by pi. I really want you to show your work because it is evidence that you are correct instead of you just saying you are correct. So r is equal to 9. We don't know the units, so we just use regular units in this problem. Okay, let's try case b. This time we know the area. So we have 200 pi square units this time, and we're trying to find radius again, so we're going to use step one of my strategy, which is, I want to see the formula, which is pi times radius squared, and that is equal to the answer, which is 200 pi, okay? Now this time, before you think about isolating just r, first isolate r squared, and then we'll square root to get rid of that. Okay, it's multiplied by pi, so divide by pi. I want you to show this step every time. It only takes a second. Those reduce, and I have r squared is equal to 200. Now that r squared is isolated, you can take the square root of both sides in order to get r by itself. Now remember that when you take the square root yourself, you have to stop and consider that there are two solutions to this problem. We'll talk about that in a, just a moment. Okay, let's, let's factor out 200 and see if we can pull out a perfect square. There's the perfect square, 100, right there. 
So it turns out that this is equal to plus or minus 10 square roots of 2. Okay, now let's go back and think about this. What is r? It's not just a variable, it's a thing. In this case, it's the radius of a circle. So can we use both the positive and the negative result for the radius of a circle? No, we can't. We can only use the positive result. When it doesn't make sense to have a negative solution, you throw it away. So in this case, when we're solving for radius, we're only going to look at 10 square roots of 2. And that is the answer for radius, okay? So let's look at this one. Find the missing part of the cone. If we know the volume, then we need to, we need to consider this height right here. All right, let's see what we know here. So the radius is 4 and the height is unknown, so we're going to let it be h, and the volume is 36 pi. So step one is formula equals answer, right? Now, what's our formula for volume of a cone? Remember the pointy ones have the special one-third general rule. So we have one-third times area of the base, which is pi r squared, times the height of the figure, okay? On the other side, we put the answer, which in this case is 36 pi. Before we try to isolate our height, there's some simplifying we can do. We know the radius, so let's plug that in. We don't need to leave that an r. So now we have 1 third times pi times 4 squared times h. Lots of multiplication on that side, right? equals 36 pi. Okay, so let's see, 4 squared is 16, and if you multiply all these whole numbers by 1 third, it's really just like there's a 3 in the denominator, and that is times pi, so 16 pi over 3, times the height equals 36 pi. And remember, we're trying to isolate the h. That's what we want to solve for. I do not care how messy the answer becomes. We just need to get h by itself. Now this is what we call a complicated fraction over here, but it's still a fraction, and it's being multiplied by h. And the way you get rid of multiplication is division, but division of fractions is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So see that 3? Put it in the top. And the 16 pi? Put it in the bottom. If you multiply by the reciprocal, everything reduces. The 3's reduce, the 16's, and the pi's all reduce. But the trick is, you have to do that to the other side also. So don't forget 3 over 16 pi on this side. All right? So now all we have is h left on that side. So all we do is clean this up, and it becomes our answer. Remember, this is over 1, so we've got some pi's we can reduce. And 16 and 36 have a common factor of 4, so we can also divide by 4. Okay, and multiply what is left. So in the numerator, we have 9 times 3, which is 27. And in the denominator, all we have is 1 times 4, so that's just 4. And we didn't have units, the volume would have been in cubic units. But whatever those were, these are now straight linear units because it's just height. All right, and that is how you solve for the missing part. I know that's a lot to take in, so you might even want to watch it more than once. And you have some examples to try in your homework. Hopefully this will help a lot.